Now in this video, we're going to be making one gallon or four liters of watermelon wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. All right, to make our watermelon wine, we will be using the following. Watermelon. I've got three of these. We need to make at least two quarts. More would be better uh, to give us our one gallon of wine. We're going to be using granulated sugar. I'm going to be using a Red Star Classique wine yeast this time around. If you don't have this, use whatever you've got. We're going to need black tea, which is going to be our tannin substitute. We're going to need the juice of half a lemon, which is going to be our acid blend substitute. We're going to need enough water to give us our full one gallon measure. We're going to need something to do primary fermentation in. We're going to need airlock with stopper or bung, as you prefer. And we're going to need something to do secondary fermentation in because after a couple of weeks in here, you're going to transfer it over here. And then you're going to do it, uh, make that transfer called racking every four or six weeks or so until your wine is gone clear. It's going to be helpful if you have a hydrometer. So we can determine how much alcohol we're producing and when fermentation is actually complete. And of course, using your sanitizer of choice, make sure that all of your equipment and utensils are clean and sanitized. And there we go. That's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Okay, one of the first things we need to do is that we need to slice up watermelon and get them in the pot. We're not going to boil it this time. Nice ripe watermelon. But we just need to juice the watermelons. So in order to get that process started, take your first watermelon, decide how you want to slice it, whether you want, you want to go lengthwise or crosswise, and then cut them into various slices. I mean, however you want to do it is entirely up to you. I think in this case, on this one, I'm going to try going crosswise. I'll probably regret it, but be very careful. Make sure you have a nice sharp knife. Make sure your fingers are well away from the business end of the knife. And just go ahead and cut it on through. All right. Now all we need to do is decide, and these were seedless watermelons, by the way, although I kind of have to wonder, I mean, if they're seedless watermelons, why are there seeds in it? Anyway, from that point on, I mean, we can either scoop it out and put it in the pot or slice it up and dice it up and put it in the pot. Uh, either way will work. I think in this case, I'm going to try, even though it means a lot more cuts, being very careful once again. this way and then from there oops, out the way. from there I can just pretty much cut around the rind portion of it make sure I got the good parts to go in the pot put that off to the side and then from there we can just pretty much just dice them up, slice and dice, however we see fit. Because we're gonna have to mash these up. So I'm thinking the smaller the chunks, the better. Okay. and into the pot they go. But as you can see, the process is going to be a little wet. <laughs> That's just one slice. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice the rest of these up and then we'll move on to the next step. 
Okay, I've sliced and diced just one of our watermelon because I'm curious to see just how much juice I'm going to get from one melon. Uh, there are a number of ways in which you can mash up, to try to extract the juice from your watermelon, but I've decided since I've got one and I don't really use it for mashing potatoes anymore, uh, I'm going to use a potato masher that I've sanitized and then I'm going to take the results or what remains and I'm going to put those in a straining bag and strain out the rest of the juice. Now you can use a muslin bag or you can use a cheesecloth or whatever you got, but that's what I'm gonna do here. So let me get started. I am getting, even with one watermelon, a fair amount of juice. I think I might be able to get me a full gallon out of just two melons, which would be cool because I don't get a chance to eat watermelon all that often. And it would be kind of nice to have one available because it is 90 degrees outside. All right, now that we've squeezed out every, every last little bit of drop we're going to out of that uh, one watermelon, let's find out how much juice we got. This is a two quart container and go ahead and add two more cups. Okay, so I've got I've got two quarts here, and I also have another four cups here. So looks like we've got. Uh, well, we're getting there. We got three quarts of uh, watermelon juice, which means we only really need the juice of about half a melon. So when we're going to the store next time around to make one gallon, we're getting two melons, but we're only going to use one and a half. And since we're not going to have to water it down with water, uh, this will be a much more fuller flavored wine. So that having been said, it's time to... Uh, it's time to go ahead and start working on that second melon. This I'm just going to put aside into the refrigerator, if for no other reason, just to get it out the way. All right, time for us to start preparing our tannin substitute. So we're going to drop in one tea bag and add about half a cup of water. Cover that up. And we want to bring that up to a boil with a nice, strong cup of black tea. All right, now that we've had an opportunity to get our tea together, we can actually, at this point, turn off the heat, put our cover back on, and we can just let that come down to a good room temperature while we start preparing our acid blend substitute. So again, we only need the juice of half a lemon. Okay, let's start incorporating all of our ingredients together. Uh, there's no special order. We'll go ahead and add in our black tea. And our acid blend substitute. And the recipe calls for three cups of sugar or 1.5 pounds of sugar. All right, that's three cups. Go ahead and get that incorporated. All right, after a pretty good vigorous stir, I'm going to go ahead and take a, an initial hydrometer reading. That's coming in at 1.096. All right, my next trick is to get as much of this juice 
in a carboy, bringing the level up to about here-ish, because I don't know how much it's going to start bubbling up when it starts doing real fermentation. So go ahead and get that process started. Just about there. Now I should know that I should stop it right about there, but since I've got about half a cup of this left. Alright, common sense there. Stop there. Because it starts bubbling, it's just going to bubble through the airlock and it's going to create a mess and I don't want to deal with that. So we're going to stop it there. All right, it is now time to change our watermelon juice into watermelon wine. Again, we're going to be using a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And I'm just going to do our best to sprinkle it around as best as possible without dumping it in there. Now, if you're using a wide mouth fermenter, then yeah, you could have used the pulp the watermelon pulp that was left and put those in straining bags and then put everything into the fermenter. But since my wide mouth fermenter is currently in use, I can't do that. So plan B. Once that's in there, we want to go ahead and insert our airlock after it's been properly filled with uh, the appropriate amount of, of liquid. And the last thing that we need to do is that we need to label our creation. All right, let's go ahead and give our creation a name. We are making watermelon wine. We started making it on that date, and our starting gravity was 1.096. Now, if you are using a wide mouth fermenter for the next three days, give it a good Pretty good stir, big good stir, some little oxygen in there, help the yeast out a bit. If you're using a regular carboy, a one gallon carboy like I am, and you still <laughs> and you still have your cap, you can just go ahead and remove your airlock, screw your cap back on, nice and tight, and give it a, give it a good little shake. Probably more than that, but just a good little shake. After three days, don't do that because you'll do more harm than good. But the first three days are all you really need. And there we go. One gallon, or in this case, four liters of watermelon wine. Now I should also point out that this is just first stage of the fermentation process. I mean, there's still some follow-up steps. After well, I don't know, a couple of weeks, three or four weeks, you might want to begin thinking about racking this into a secondary cardboard container. That's when you start seeing a layer of sediment building up along the bottom and continuing that process every four or six weeks until your wine starts to become clear. And at which point you can probably start thinking about bottling it. But uh, you're looking at another long-term project, at least 12 months, uh, to turn watermelon juice into wine. Just like with any other wine, the longer you wait, the better it is. Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing a 12-month taste testing of a batch of watermelon wine that I did. And we're going to find out if it's any good. Uh, we're going to skip to the basics and on this one, and we're just simply going to say that uh, watermelon wine, born 5 20, 21, almost 13 months, but not quite. Uh, ABB on this one was 13.65%, and it's been pasteurized. And we're just going to cut to the chase on this one. There is, after bottling it a couple of months ago, there is a small layer of sediment on the bottom of the bottle. I mean, it's not clear by any means. I don't remember if I used pectic enzyme. I probably did not, which is fine. I'm trying to get away from it. But we're going to go ahead and crack this one open. Now, 
Now I did back sweeten it, but that was like several months ago. So I really don't know what this tastes like at, at the present time. Just based on the aroma from the, from the, uh, from the bottle, it doesn't really smell like watermelon. It smells more like watermelon, watermelon rind. But we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Small shot. Can you smell alcohol? You can. I mean, it's 13 percent. 13.65%, so you can smell it. I mean, it's not like... You can smell it. But you also still smell what smells like watermelon rind, which is what some people, when I was watching uh, some of the uh, uh, videos of people making this, I was reading some of the reviews, it's an either, it's a love-hate type of relationship. You either love it <laughs> or you, you, you have a tendency to think that it tastes more like watermelon rind. And I was reading that there are some ways around that <clears throat> to get rid of that uh, rind taste. But I made it the way I made it, and it's either going to taste good or it's not. And the only way to find that out is to go ahead and taste it. <laughs> is to go ahead and taste it. doesn't really taste a whole lot like watermelon. I think your first impressions. It doesn't really taste like watermelon. You can taste it. It's kind of sorta. Uh, but if you, I'm sure you, most of you have had watermelon before, as you get closer to the rind, without actually starting to munch on the actual rind itself, we're getting closer to the rind. That's my that's my initial impression of of, the, of this watermelon wine, uh, wine so far. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, let's give it another shot here. I mean, it um, has just a tad bit of harshness on the back end. Um, 12 going on 13 months, I think uh, maybe additional time would help this one, at least in terms of the uh, slight, very slight hardness, harshness on the back end. I think I back sweeten it pretty well. And by the way, uh, uh, I do have separate standalone videos for uh, both rackings and back sweetening and degassing and bottling, whole nine yards. I usually don't include those in the actual making of the videos because, well, I mean, if you've seen one rack, you've seen them all. So why, well, I might as well just have a separate video in case you're interested in that. And one rack applies to all. But this one, I mean, it's not a bad tasting wine. I mean, it's, it's okay, I mean, I mean, it's okay. Um, I wish it tasted a bit more. Yeah, I wish it tasted a bit more like the center heart of a watermelon as opposed to closer to the edge of the watermelon. But that's where I pretty much put this one again. Uh, it doesn't taste like watermelon rind, but it's kind of sort of closely kind of getting there, okay? Um, yeah, it, it's slowly getting there. I mean, I think having this one chilled might help it a bit. Yeah, I think j this one being chilled just slightly would help it a little bit. But uh, I mean, overall, it's it's not a bad wine. Um, and if you've seen my wine tasting videos, you know that I generally pour a lot more than this in the, in the class, but. I mean, it's okay. 
And by okay, I mean, that's kind of subjective. So let me, let me put it to you another way. Would I make this again? Hmm. I mean, I might make this again. I mean, it was fairly cheap. I mean, what, two watermelons is all I really ended up using uh, that in a little bit of time. Um, I mean, it's okay. Yep. That's all I'm going to say for this one. I am going to, I am going to finish this bottle and the remaining four. Uh, we'll put this one in the refrigerator to see if that uh, improves it a bit. But now in the next, uh, between now and the next, uh, oh, I don't know, six to 12 months, uh, I'll be opening up the, the additional bottles to see if there's been any, any kind of improvement. If time does, if time makes it better, most wines, it kind of sort of does. Um, but yeah, at 12 months, I would say it's not quite there yet. Uh, but again, very short video. Uh, for, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notifi notify buttons. That's the standard. Uh, become a member to help support this channel, to help me pay for the ingredients to make more of this stuff. Or better yet, become a Patreon. Just simply help support the channel that way. Uh, so again, uh, I'll see you in the next video, which should be coming up fairly shortly.